Storage tech is very intimidating. For example, you might have heard of the one wide, unload proof, 100% reliable, zero game tick reset, slice preserving, dustless, slimeless, noiseless, variable, mixed storage system. Sounds complicated, right? Well, actually, it's just a chest minecart. Storage tech seems very intimidating because of the endless possibilities that it provides. And with those endless possibilities, there seems to be an endless dictionary of jargon behind it. This is very daunting for newbies. Newbies like me. Maybe like many of you, I've always been interested in digging into storage tech, but hesitated due to the overwhelming amount of concepts to learn. At least until my community insisted that they would teach me. And we in turn could use this series as a forum to break down the basics of storage tech in a hope to make it more accessible to more people. To be clear, this is a community written series. All concepts and examples are sourced and written by my Discord community. And you are welcome to participate if you would like. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. There is one block that is absolutely necessary for storage tech, hoppers. Without them, there's no storage tech. Even so, people have a love-hate relationship with hoppers because, well, frankly, they suck. They're laggy, locational, and their underlying mechanics are stupidly complex. But storage tech can't exist without them. There are many uses for hoppers beyond putting items in chests. Item pickup and transportation is maybe the most basic usage of hoppers. But there are also signal strength based item filters, silos, clocks, and they can be used for very useful wiring components, plus many more uses. Simply put, they're a container with an inventory of five slots, but they are a special container as they are able to pick up and move items without any redstone involved, and are the only block in vanilla Minecraft that can do this. The mechanism they use to transport items is often summarized in push and pull events. Pushing is when there is an item in a hopper and it pushes that item into another container. The item is pushed towards the direction of the nozzle at the bottom of the hopper, which can be in any adjacent direction except for up. A pull, in contrast, is taking an item from outside into a hopper. Pulls are not when items are on the ground and are picked up by the hopper. That is a different mechanism called entity pickup. Instead, it is when a hopper detects a container above itself with an item in it, and it quote unquote sucks that item from that container into itself. Item transportation is just a series of pushes and pulls. Pretty simple, right? Well, this of course is the very basics, but as mentioned before, hoppers are actually extremely complex. So while we will not dive all the way into them in this video, we are going to go through some of the basics of hopper logic. It's important to understand and really is the basis of storage tech. So let's dive into it. Here is a hopper. It has a chest above it and is pointing into a chest below it. The first thing that the game does is to check if the hopper is on cooldown or if it is disabled. A cooldown happens after every item transfer. It is the base limitation for how fast a hopper can move item. The cooldown results in a maximum transfer speed of one item every eight game ticks or 2.5 items a second, which is often called hopper speed and is commonly expressed as 9,000 items per hour. When a hopper is powered, it is locked or disabled, which essentially turns the hopper into a five slot container, which does not process any of its normal functions. So first, we check if the hopper is in cooldown or disabled. If so, it skips all hopper calculations until the next game tick. If it is not disabled or on cooldown, then we start the push phase. The hopper will try to push an item into a targeted block. The checks to see if it can push are pretty straightforward. It will first check the block its nozzle is facing into, which I am calling the targeted block. In this case, it is to chest below. If the block does not have a valid inventory, like say for example, it's a stone block, or the inventory it has is completely full, the game will skip the rest of the push calculations. If we pass these checks, then the hopper will take the item in the top left slot and attempt to move that item to the inventory of the targeted block. It will start in the top left and attempt every slot, moving right and down until it succeeds or fails every slot. If it fails, it will try this process again with this second item in the hopper to the right. Then it will repeat this until it succeeds or fails all the attempts. 
In our case, it will succeed when we get to coal, which can move into the third slot of the chest. If the push was successful, it will send a comparator update to the targeted block and set the targeted block's cooldown if that block is a hopper. Then the hopper moves on to the pull phase. First, the hopper will check to make sure it can pull an item. It checks to see if it itself is full, if there is no inventory to pull from above the hopper, or if there is an inventory, it checks if this is empty. If any of those are true, it cancels the pull attempt. If we pass these checks, the hopper attempts to pull an item from the above inventory. This is the exact same process as the push phase, where it checks an item in the source inventory, in this case, the chest above, and tries to place it into every slot in the targeted inventory, in this case, the hopper. It does this with every item in the source inventory. And like pushing, it will continue until successful or each item fail. If it is successful, then it will update any source inventory comparators. Next, we move on to the entity pickup phase. This only occurs if pull attempts fail due to no inventory being located above the hopper. This one is like a pull. It will check to see if there are entities in the pickup region, which is the block space above the hopper and the space in the hopper bowl itself. If so, it will iterate through the items from oldest to youngest, trying to quote unquote pull an item into a slot, much like the pull and push phase loops. It can pick up up to an entire stack of items at one time if there is space in the slot. Once again, it will run until successful or all attempts fail. Finally, if the hopper has pushed, pulled, or completed an entity pickup during this tick, it will put itself in cooldown and update any comparators connected to it. And that's it. It's a little bit complicated, but really not too bad, and very important to know. Here is a reference diagram based on an image from 2 no 2 name that shows the details and is a good reference for future conversations. Here is the push, the pull, and the entity pickup. The last topic of this video is to say that hoppers really suck. I mean, for a lot of reasons, but the reason I say it here is because they cause a lot of lag. This is a whole topic onto itself, but at the bare fundamentals, just looking at this diagram, we can see that hopper tick calculations are quite complex. More complex calculations take more game resources. Fortunately, we can minimize the impact of lag by looking at this flowchart. Basically, to minimize lag, we want to minimize the amount of calculations a hopper has to do. So finding the fastest route through this flowchart will allow us to do that and skip as many unnecessary calculations as possible. The shortest way? Disable the hopper. The game checks to see if the hopper is disabled. If so, it skips all the other calculations. This is the most lag friendly, but I mean, it also just makes the hopper a smaller chest. So isn't such a great solution. One of the most common practices to minimize hopper lag is to place a small inventory block over a hopper when it is in a hopper line. In this application, it's not pulling or doing entity pickup. So having an empty container over the hopper will take this route and skip this entire portion, thus minimizing the calculations necessary and the lag. This concept works in the other way too though. The most laggy arrangement? A hopper with double chest above and below, specifically filled with items that won't fit in or out of the hopper, all of which do have space. Why? Well, looking at this diagram, we can see that we must do all the calculations except for the entity pickup. But looking at these two loops, it's even more clear why. In this situation, we have to do these loops for every item slot. So 54 times five times two, which takes a lot of resources. Entity pickup with entities in the same subchunk is similar to this also, since we must iterate over each entity. That is why using small inventory blocks, specifically a composter, over open hoppers is really an essential lag reducing step. But that's going to do it for this video. Subscribe if you want to follow this series. I want to again remind you that this is a community video, meaning that it is researched and written by my Discord community. If you want to get involved, join the Discord server. The entire video production process is open to all Discord members. Thank you, as always, to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate the support. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.